the year is 1976. The company is Atari. The game is Breakout, a title that originally came to be after the desire to make Pong a more single player experience and would go on to become an arcade classic. The objective was to bounce a ball back and forth between a set of blocks and a controllable paddle with the aim being to destroy every block on screen. Difficulty increased with the ball gaining speed and the paddle shrinking in size if the player hits the back wall past the last row of blocks. Fast forward 24 years and now, the year is 2000. The company is Hasbro Interactive in partnership with Atari and Supersonic Software. The game is Breakout. This little thing here is part of a long line of ports and updated re-releases of the original Breakout concept of gameplay, having been reworked and shipped for systems like the Atari 2600 and 5200, the Atari Jaguar, and a couple of mobile ports, along with a slew of games noted as being Breakout clones. This version, released for both the PlayStation 1 and PC, is particularly noteworthy for its inclusion of an ongoing storyline and the way it moulds the Breakout formula to provide new mechanics for the different levels seen in the game. Now this has been part of my collection for a good while now, and I have been able to beat the entirety of it multiple times in the past, but it's been a few years since I last touched it, and now I think it's an ideal time to pay this game a revisit and see how it lives up to adult me's expectations. So let's uh, <clears throat> break out the controller and see what's what, 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 you got a problem with that? Do you want to try writing jokes for this script, huh? do you? Go on, screw you on! We open up to a montage of a secluded desert island paradise inhabited by these weird looking rectangle people that enjoy sunbathing, playing volleyball and disc jockeying at the turntables. Before we go into the game's main menu, the basics are all presented in the options menu so you can load and save from a memory card, change your sound levels and alter the screen position. But the one thing I want to talk about here is the analog controller option. Within this menu, the only option you seem to be given is turning vibration on and off. And seeing this is the only option, I've become slightly bemused and have to voice a little bit of concern here. But apart from this, seems like the only thing we can access in the single player game is the story mode, so let's get started with that. We begin our tale with one of the rectangle people accidentally punching the volleyball far out to sea, after which the main rectangle person character thing named Bouncer offers to retrieve the ball. Oh my god, are you absolutely fucking kidding me? I can't believe that. It, it is this voice acting, really? Is this what the game expects me to believe is voice acting? Is dialogue? No breakout, no. I'm absolutely not buying this. You let me down, game. You let me down. What is this even trying to be? I is this trying to follow or pay homage to Banjo Kazooie's randomized voice samples? Right, look, here's the thing. The character sounds in that game had to be like that for a reason because of cartridge memory limits. But the way they were done helped them achieve a timeless and instantly recognizable feel. And here, it's just not the same. It's annoying more than anything else. And plus, you're on a PlayStation game. You're in a disc-based format. You shouldn't need to worry about things like this because you're not on a cartridge. You should have loads more space to put in some full vocal takes. Look, case in point, look at Crash Bandicoot 2 with these long dialogue sequences. And this was nearly three years before this? I'm getting really upset! So Bouncer goes in to rescue the ball whilst his lady friend Daisy admires his heroics. Apparently no relation. Upon his return to shore, he's shocked to find that his friends are missing. And waiting for him is the evil rectangle person character thingamajig. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Waiting for him is the evil Batniks, who plans to take Daisy for himself. With that, he drags the red protagonist into his prison. And now our hero must find a way to escape the prison to then find his friends, rescue Daisy, and defeat the evil Batniks. Next. I should know. He says so right here in the manual. <laughs> and at this point, the game's tutorial starts. Here we meet another character named Coach Steel, a steel ball who is here to guide Bouncer on his mission. And he looks, he looks awfully, awfully happy, happy about it. it. This tutorial will explain all the moves and controls to you and lets you practice them in short challenges. Basically, you'll need to move the paddle to the left and right to follow the ball and keep it in the field of play. You can change the trajectory of the ball in two different ways. One way is by using the curved paddle and hitting the ball at the edges to change its angle accordingly. The other way is to use a straight paddle and slice the ball as it arrives at you. 
like the Raphael Nadal does. Using the L and R buttons while using the straight paddle also allows you to apply a small difference in its angle to change the direction of the ball in that fashion. And changing between the curve and straight paddles can be achieved with a simple tap of the square button. And with that, you have learned the ways of breakout. Coach Steele is then on hand to show you how well you perform during the tutorial and gives you any one of 11 ranks based on your results. At this point, the game is effectively setting the difficulty level. Since the higher rank you are, the harder the game supposedly becomes. And you don't even have to follow Coach Steele's recommendation either because you're free to choose your own rank and effectively set your own difficulty level. But for the sake of consistency, let's go ahead and follow his recommended ranking of Challenger. And we're almost ready to start. Okay, so the next part of this video might end up being quite a long-winded one, and I was actually really worried how I was going to tackle this bit when I was writing the script. You see, Breakout has a large variety of different playing styles, as mentioned previously, and these have a tendency to change on a level-by-level basis as you're going through the story mode. And this in turn made talking about the story and the gameplay in different segments pretty much redundant, and trying to talk about every single level's different mechanics is going to take a hell of a lot of time, so... What I'm going to do is just simplify it all as best as I can, so stick with me guys. After completing our training, it's time for Bowser to escape the prison by breaking down the wall at the far end and sending his ball through. The next obstacle is a large wire fence behind a mountain of crates where the objective is to make a clear route to the fence and hit it enough times in a similar spot to punch a hole in it so our guy can escape. And now we're in a country lane, but a massive wolf is heading our way and... Um, what am I seeing here? I am not hitting blocks with a ball and a paddle, but instead I am being chased by a wolf whilst I'm running away on my feet. Okay, wh when I when I said this game molded the breakout formula to provide new mechanics for the levels, I, I never thought it would go like this drastically new. But we're here now, and we're running away from a rabid wolf. And we've just got to accept it. Whilst we're running away, we can pick up balls littered on the path and flick them behind to momentarily stop the wolf from gaining on us. After this, the story is going to take us to a varying selection of different locales that have very little to no explanation as to how or why we're going to said locales. Again, we've just got to accept it. Our first stop, for instance, after the prison is an Egyptian tomb under a pyramid where an evil mummy resides and tries to stop us from rescuing our first friend with the help of... Let, let's call it a curse, shall we? Let's keep the theme going here. After Egypt, we find ourselves in a simple farmyard, where we deal with herding annoying sheep, battling deranged chickens, fending off evil ducks to rescue our second friend, and then escaping another rabid wolf. Next up is a dragon's medieval castle, guarded by loyal knights and maintained by a legion of serfs. Hang on, there's references to mass slavery in this game? Is this not a bit much for the little children breakout? Then it's off to a factory to rescue the last of our four companions from the clutches of a mad robot. And with the band back together, they take off on a rocket to Batnix's secret moon base. And with the evil panel defeated, the credits start rolling. Have I, uh, have, have I beaten the game already? Is that it? Well, all right then. I guess now we'll go on to talk about- Oh, okay! This is an evil trick! I've been had! Uh, I've been punked! Apparently, it's not over yet, as the evil Batnix's final dastardly plan is to challenge you to beat a retro version of Breakout akin to the original. Okay then while watching him do whatever the fuck this is in the backdrop. But we beat the challenge, defeat Batnix for good, reunite with our lady friend, and dance the night away in celebration. And during our adventure, we've had to survive quite a number of different playstyles and changes to the traditional breakout format. And I think that some of these are actually quite enjoyable and capitalise on their opportunities to alter gameplay really well. Of course, you've got the more standard levels in which the field has to be completely rid of blocks, such as this pyramid stage and in the castle courtyard. But there are also those levels that add that little something extra to bear in mind as you play. These pipe stages in the factory world, for example, require you to break certain blocks to try and make an unbroken path that will connect both ends together. Together. These levels I especially like because that added puzzle element adds another layer of depth to the game, another dynamic that you'll need to pay attention to. You also have a number of other stages that add their own unique twist. This stage, for example, has you trying to balance these barrels on a platform whilst lowering them down by hitting these buttons. And in this one, hitting certain chickens will cause them to lay extra balls into the field of play. And then... Ah! The chickens are back! I knew it! I knew the chickens were conspiring against us all! There's intent in those eyes. There's 
evil in those eyes. This level pays a subtle tribute to space invaders in the way that the hens move around the field and in the music that plays in this level. And all the while as you play, you're provided with power-up cubes that randomly appear in the playing field. Knocking a ball into them sends them rolling down towards your plane of movement, and picking them up adds the power-up to your inventory. Pressing the X button uses the currently selected power-up. You'll also note that beating a level raises your rank to the next level above, thus making the next level more difficult to complete. Losing all of your lives, however, will demote your rank by one, but it does make the retry easier for you in some way. Do you know what? I'm actually quite surprised here. There's a good variety on show, I won't deny that. But I just don't think that all the stages live up to be as fun as others, and rather ironically, I think it's because some of them completely change the playing style altogether. Certain stages like the wolf chases, this rafting segment, and certain boss fights don't follow the traditional breakout format. The control scheme is often changed in favour of three directional movement, but unfortunately it leads to these stages becoming the most boring and tedious out of the bunch. However, the game is thoughtful enough to give you a rundown of the new controls for these particular stages before you set off, and granted some of them are not as bad as others, but yet they don't offer that same satisfying feeling when you cause massive destruction in the normal type stages. And can I just take a moment to comment on the character designs here, you know these rectangle things? Because I noticed that they obviously must have some sort of mouth to be able to do these sorts of gaping expressions with, but then I noticed that in this dragon boss fight, I am picking up these bricks with what looked to be my hands. So this means that these guys' hands are in fact attached to their bottom lips? What? I mean like, I mean like, how, how would this, how would this even work? As far as presentation goes in Breakout, it's about as basic as you can get. Level designs benefit from having a decent variety of worlds to use for inspiration. I especially find the Egyptian levels to be very nicely themed, but all of the stages generally use good varieties of colour, though lighting can be a bit inconsistent. Sound-wise, I've already had my moan at what the game expects me to believe is dialogue, but otherwise, there isn't much to say. I'd have liked the instrumentations in the music to be slightly more varied, but the actual melodies aren't horrible to listen to, but they will get repetitive after a while. There's also a multiplayer option here, available for up to four people, where the aim is to try and clear your field of play from blocks before your opponent. Hitting large groups of coloured blocks will let you send them over to your opponent's side, in a similar vein to Puyo Pop Fever. And certain stages feature unique gimmicks, such as the castle stage allowing you to fry your opponent with Dragon Breath. But despite this, one of the biggest gripes I have here is how short the main game can be. The story mode can be beaten in little over an hour, and there's very little else on offer apart from the multiplayer modes and challenges challenge modes, where all you do is simply replay stages to try and achieve better ranks. Another big thing for me at least was trying to use the directional pad whilst playing the game. That's how I've been playing it so far, and that digital setup makes all of my movements quite precise and thus that makes it quite hard to control. Now if only I was able to use the analog sticks to play this and... Hang on, let me just check the jewel case, let's have a look here... Oh no, wait, it does say, look... It does say analog control is compatible with it, so let me just turn that on and this thing and see if it works any better that way. If I'm honest here, the analog support has saved this game. Using the analog stick to control the paddle is just so much better. It's glorious! It's so much more comfortable to use and offers me that extra level of control that using the direction pad couldn't really bring to the plate. But is this enough to warrant Breakout a place on the treasure list? I mean, there's certainly a lot about this game that I find personally commendable, but on the other hand, there are some things that just don't impress me as much, and that might spoil the overall experience for some other players. Where I have been most impressed is in the main game's mechanics. It provides a good number of variations on the standard format that show how malleable and interchangeable the formula is, and it offers some quite unique and fun stages along its way. I do also think that multiplayer mode has the potential to be a good competitive laugh, but pretty much everything else found in Breakout is either average or subpar. It looks and sounds good enough, Enough, but it's not brilliant, and you've heard the complaints I have with some of the differing mechanics, the short and insultingly simple storyline, and how difficult it can be to control without the analog support switched on. It's certainly not the worst thing I've ever played, and it does some things right, but this isn't something I would regard as being anything but just okay. I've decided to award Breakout the middle ground and give it the label of Fence Warmer. 
And now, it's over to you to leave your comments on this game and your feedback below, and that will do until next time. All I can say now is stay you, and stay awesome, and I will see you all later on. What, why, why are you still here? What, why are you still here? The, 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 ep the episode is over. There's nothing more. This is the end. This is done. It's over. Can you just go? Can you just leave? Can you just get out of my room? Can you just get out? Just get, just get out of my room! And a big super massive hello to you all. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to give a like and a favourite if you enjoyed the video. And if you really liked it and you want more, go see a couple of my other recent videos by clicking the links here. And also consider subscribing to The Richardo Show so you can be among the first to see new content as and when it's ready. Thanks again and I will see you guys later on.